In this video, we're going to do two practice problems that have to do with using density and molar mass with the ideal gas law. Now, so far, we've been using this equation here, PV equals nRT, which lets us solve for pressure, volume, moles, and temperature of a gas sample. If we know three of these variables, we can always figure out the fourth. But we run into a problem when we try to do a question like this, which asks, what is the density of a particular gas sample? Well, that's a problem, because density isn't one of these four variables that I have here. So how do I solve a problem like this? It turns out that I can take PV equals nRT and transform it into another version of the ideal gas law, which I've written here. This lets us solve for slightly different variables. Particularly, it lets us solve for density, uppercase D, and molar mass of a gas, capital M, as well as, uh, as, well as pressure and temperature. So when, we, uh, when we're doing an ideal gas law question that asks us about the density of a gas, we have to use this alternate form of the ideal gas law equation instead of PV equals nRT. Now, if you're interested in how I went from here to here, I'll show you how to do that at the very end of the video. You can watch it if you want. But let's get started right now with how to actually solve this sort of a problem. So I've laid out some of the variables right here. Obviously, density is what we're going to be solving for. And let's start with temperature. It's 65 degrees Celsius. We know that won't work with gases. Celsius temperatures are no good with gas. We're going to have to convert it to Kelvin temperatures by adding 273. And I end up getting uh, 338 Kelvin. Now that'll work with a gas equation. Let's take a look at pressure. The units of pressure uh, don't match my pressure units on R. That's a problem. I have millimeters of mercury here, and I have ATMs there. So that means that I'm going to have to take my pressure, multiply it by a conversion factor in order to convert from millimeters of mercury to ATM. So when I do that, I get 1.23 ATM. Now the pressures match, and I'm set with that. Now the last thing that I'll need to do is solve for the molar mass of the gas that I'm using, which here is sulfur dioxide, SO2. In order to get the molar mass of SO2, I'm going to have to take the molar mass of sulfur and add it to two times the molar mass of oxygen, because I have two oxygens. When I do that, I'm going to get 64.1 grams per mole. Now I've got my molar mass, temperature, and pressure, and I'm ready to go ahead and solve the equation. Now, when you use this form of the ideal gas law, the, the fractions that you get are very ugly. You're going to see in just a minute that I'm going to have to make a four-story fraction. There's no good way to avoid this. When we're doing PV equals nRT, um, I showed you a trick to avoid getting um, more than a top and bottom in a fraction. But unfortunately, there's just not a good way to get around it here. So I'll slowly walk you through it. And then most importantly, I'll show you how to cancel units with one of these four-story fractions. It's a pain, but it's really not that hard. So take this equation. Density equals pressure, 1.23 atms times molar mass, 64.1 grams per mole. That's the top of the fraction. Now we have R. times T, 338 Kelvin. As you can see, there's uh, four different levels of this fraction. Now what I want to do is I want to cancel the units. And here's how I do it when I'm, when I'm dealing with something that looks like this. The first thing is I just look at the top of the fraction. Are there any units that I can cancel here? There aren't. Now I look at just the bottom of the fraction. Are there any units that I can cancel here? There's one. I have Kelvin up here, and I have Kelvin down there, so those can cancel out. All right, now I look at the top of the top and the top of the bottom. I have ATM here, and I have ATM there, so they can cancel out. And then I look at the bottom of the top, 
and the bottom of the bottom, moles here, moles there. I've canceled out everything. I'm left with grams and liters. So I plug this math into my calculator, and the answer that I get out, rounded to three significant digits, is going to be 2.84. What are the units on this? Well, I have grams on top of the fraction, and I have liters on the bottom of the fraction. So my final units are going to be grams per liter, which makes perfect sense because that's how we report density as grams per liter. So that's how we solve this sort of an equation. Let's go on. Uh, let's go on to the next example. Okay, so here's our second problem. A gas has a density of 3.01 grams per liter at STP. What is its molar mass? So first of all, since we're using density, we're going to want to use this form of the ideal gas law that has density and molar mass in it. Now, instead of giving us a bunch of numbers, this guy here just asks us for STP. Don't get freaked out by this. Some people do. Remember what STP is. STP stands for Standard Temperature and Pressure, and it's a particular set of conditions. Zero degrees Celsius and one ATM. So we can go ahead and plug these right into our variables. Pressure, one ATM. Temperature, zero degrees Celsius, which we can't use because it's Celsius. We add 273 to that to get Kelvin. So zero plus 273 is going to be 200 and 73 Kelvin. Here are all of our variables laid out and we're, uh, we're ready to go to work. Now, I don't want to have to go through all the steps of rearranging the equation. So I'll just show you what I'm going to do here. I have this, then I take RT, I move it up onto this side of the fraction, I divide both sides by P, and then I just flip it. So I'm left with M equals RTD, divided by p. And that's the form of the equation that I'm going to be using here. So m equals r 0 0.0821 liters atm divided by kelvin moles times temperature 273 kelvin times density 3.01 grams per liter. All of that divided by pressure, 1 atm. Okay, now we've got to cancel units in this ugly triple-decker fraction. Okay, let's look just at the top. What can we cancel here? Liters up here, liters down there. Kelvin up here, Kelvin down there. All right, that's it. Now, we look at the top of the top and the bottom here. ATMs there, ATMs there. The only thing that we're left is with is grams per mole. Isn't that curious? Because it just turns out that molar mass is always reported in grams per mole. So anyway, I go through, plug this into my calculator. The math that I'm going to do is 0 0.0821 times 273 times 3.01. All of that divided by 1. And rounded to, uh, to three significant figures, I'm going to get 67.5 grams per mole. And that's how I solve for molar mass using density and the ideal gas law. Now finally, if you're interested, I'll show you how we can go from PV equals NRT to the transformed version of the ideal gas law that uses density and molar mass. So I'm going to start here with PV equals NRT. And I'm going to solve it for N. So I'm going to get N equals PV divided by RT. The first thing that I want to do is I want to get molar mass into the equation. Remember that moles, in order to get moles, we take the mass of a sample, like 40 grams of a lump of carbon or something, and divide it by the molar mass in order to find out how many moles there are. So what I've written as moles here, I can rewrite as mass divided by molar mass. So I'm going to substitute little m divided by big M, mass divided by molar mass in for n. So mass divided by molar mass equals PV equals RT. So there's molar mass. That's how we got that into the equation. How are we going to get density into the equation? Remember, density is mass divided by volume. So let's rearrange this to get mass 
over volume. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this M up here and I move this V down here. So I'm going to get M divided by V equals PMRT. Now mass over volume I can rewrite as density because they're the same thing. So now I have density equals pressure times molar mass divided by the universal gas constant times T. And that is our transformed version of the ideal gas law equation.